Are we making more data than we can manage? That's the question we'll be discussing today on the Data Center Frontier Show. I'm your host, Rich Miller. I'm the founder and editor of Data Center Frontier, where we track the new technologies that are changing your world and the data center industry. So just about everyone you know is probably using more data today than they did yesterday, and will use even more tomorrow. This growing dependence upon data has driven a massive explosion, a sort of data tsunami that has been beneficial for the data center industry. The growing amount of data creates challenges both for end users and for the companies that must store and manage that data. Microsoft has been looking closely at this problem and their baseline uh, assumption is that pretty soon there's gonna be more data being generated than we can effectively manage. So they're looking at several new technologies for data storage and they're a little bit different. The first is DNA storage and the second is holographic storage. Now these both kind of sound like science experiments uh, but the science fiction aspect of them uh, sort of distracts from the fact that these are, are potential ways to bring new levels of scale to data management. In its uh, research division, Microsoft is looking at new ways to store uh, data uh, into synthetic DNA, which winds up being stored in a liquid solution. Uh, they've uh, come up with a prototype that uses uh, beakers and really looks like a lab set up more so than a, than a cloud computing center. That's one of the things that uh, will have to be uh, managed uh, going forward in trying to see whether this is a technology that can ever be comfortable in a real world data center. There's lots of uh, engineering uh, work that needs to be done before we can get to that point. But the motivation is that according to Microsoft, if you took an exabyte of data, right now you need two large data centers, each about the size of a Walmart, uh, to properly store and manage that data. If DNA storage succeeds, it's possible that that could be shrunken down to a small chip of like a single cubic centimeter. That's an, a, a compelling possibility uh, and would bring entirely new scale to the way that uh, data can be stored. And that's important when we think about all of the technologies going forward that uh, are going to require much more data than they use today. An example would be video. As we talk about 4K and 8K H, uh, high definition video, uh, these involve much larger amounts of data than uh, the current technologies do. Uh, the same is, is certainly true for uh, some of the virtual reality and augmented reality that we see. Uh, and artificial intelligence, which is something that is really arriving today in a big way, uh, is driving much larger data sets as we come up with models that can manage you know, billions upon billions of data points and put them into calculations that can conduct and, and automate different types of work. Basically, we are growing data at an explosive rate across the board. At Data Center Frontier, we think about uh, data generation in terms of streams. There's many different stream, streams of, uh, of data coming into the data center industry from a lot of different industries. Not all of these new uh, technologies have to succeed spectacularly for this to have a huge impact upon uh, the data center demand and the technologies themselves that live inside the data center and must manage this data tsunami. When you think about holograms, most of us think of Star Wars and that scene where the hologram of Princess Leia pops up. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Holograms have lots of other functions though, including the fact that they can store data. This is a technology that's been uh, known about. It's been around since the 1960s, but it's been really hard to commercialize, partly because of the technology that's required to successfully execute it. One of the key requirements is uh, high definition cameras. And uh, that's an area where 
uh, our uh, smartphone technology of today has come a long way and has made it um, much more feasible to think about using holograms for storage. Uh, Microsoft has done a lot of interesting research in this area with its HoloLens product, which is uh, most familiar to, to, to many gamers who, who, uh, who, who use it for virtual reality kind of uh, uh, gaming, uh, but also has applications in the commercial world, helping people build and design products. So the HoloLens uh, gives some insights into uh, how the holographic systems might be used for storage. Uh, in Microsoft's case, they have looked at different ways to embed the data in crystals. And uh, it's a little bit different from the optical storage systems that we see today. It goes back to light and using lasers to, to write uh, uh, data, but rather than just using uh, one surface, it can really uh, do uh, the storage in parallel and give you a lot more storage capacity. In traditional data storage systems, information is stored in a binary series of ones and zeros that are written onto spinning disks or tape uh, using magnetics, or using lasers can be written onto DVDs or Blu-ray disks. In a DNA system, data is stored in a liquid solution containing DNA and then is read by systems that can combine electronic and molecular components. Um, they use synthetic DNA, uh, so it doesn't repurpose human DNA or animal DNA. Uh, Mark Rosinovich, who is the uh, chief technical officer at Microsoft Azure, discussed these projects recently at Microsoft Ignite and joked that your uh, uh, data storage uh, of your family photos uh, can't be used to, to create some sort of crazy uh, animals or running around or weird creatures. But there is a science fiction aspect of this that is hard to get your head around. Um, and Microsoft acknowledges that it's a, a long way to go before you can have this uh, sort of ready for showtime in the data center. But the potential gains in terms of the volume of storage uh, make it worth pursuing. Microsoft has not been bashful about investing in research that pursues kind of moonshot projects to advance new technologies. A good example that many of you may be familiar with is its underwater edge data center project, uh, which is called Project Natick, in which they took a bunch of servers, uh, sealed them in a capsule, and dropped them to the, the ocean floor uh, about a thousand yards off of Scotland to see how they would perform. One of the key ingredients in that was pumping the, uh, the capsule full of nitrogen so that the, the, that is the environment that the servers are living in. And one of the things that they found is that in the nitrogen environment, servers uh, shelf life was in, increased uh, dramatically. They had one eighth the rate of failures that most land-based traditional uh, servers have. So that's one area in which they're starting to see a, a dividend on their investment in these moonshot projects. Microsoft sees DNA as a, a, another possible uh, venue where the gains may more than justify the kind of research dollars that they're putting into it. More recently, Microsoft has begun talking about its holographic data storage system, uh, which uh, takes data uh, within optical light beams and it's stored as an image inside a crystal of lithium niobate. So, uh, holographic storage is capable of rec recording and reading millions of bits in parallel, enabling data transfer rates that are uh, far greater than those that you get by traditional optical storage. Uh, Microsoft Research Cambridge and the Azure team have been working together on a prototype uh, that uh, has successfully demonstrated many of the concepts that they think will uh, be uh, the way that this will work in an Azure cloud data center. These technologies are making rapid progress, but they're still likely many years away from implementation of any kind of scale in an actual data center. Even after new technologies become viable, they're adopted gradually over time, uh, providing data center operators 
uh, with uh, an opportunity to adapt their designs and best practices for these new technologies. Uh, for an example, let's look at cloud computing, uh, which has been one of the most disruptive and impactful IT trends. Amazon Web Services, the first major cloud computing platform, debuted in 2006. We are nearly 14 years on, and uh, uh, Gartner says that the enterprise uh, adoption of cloud computing of platforms is at about 30%. There's still a much larger chunk of people who aren't in the cloud than are. But Microsoft's interest in these technologies underscores the uh, innovation challenge for companies that are targeting the hyperscale data center sector, which is an increasingly large uh, portion of the data center business and drives many of the innovations that we've seen in data center construction and speed to market, uh, as well as networking and storage. Service providers that want to target these hyperscale data center uh, providers must reckon with these new technologies that they are looking at uh, and the, spe the specifications that will be uh, required to support them. So maybe DNA storage and holographic storage aren't right around the corner, but they're in the pipeline and they are one of the many technologies that we're tracking at Data Center Frontier that we think will may eventually make their way to the data center and change the way that this business is operated. The future is pretty amazing. And sometimes that involves science fiction that becomes very real and lives inside a data center. Thanks. That is it for this week. Uh, I'm Rich Miller. Uh, and uh, this has been the Data Center Frontier Show. Please uh, subscribe to our podcast. Uh, listen to it wherever you get your quality podcasts and be sure to uh, give us a good rating and tell all your friends about it. Thanks. And we'll talk to you again very soon.